In this question, we are given the values of all six resistances, as well as the current that is flowing through the resistor labeled R6. And our job is to somehow figure out the potential difference that is supplied by the battery. And to do that, we're basically going to work our way backwards through the circuit. So let's take a look at what we mean by working our way backwards through the circuit. We begin by analyzing R6. We can see that R6 has a known resistance value as well as a known current, and we can use Ohm's law to determine the value of the potential difference across that resistor. We know that the potential difference across resistor six would be the current I6 multiplied by the resistance R6. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug in the given values. I6 is 1.4 amps and R6 is 4 ohms. When we calculate this, we get a potential difference of 5.6 volts. And anytime we find information about a given resistor, we should mark that information on our diagram. So V6 is going to equal 5.6 volts. Now let's take a look at R5 next. We can see that R5 is in series with R6 because they are connected by a continuous wire without any branches in it. And because they're in series, that means that the current flowing through R5 is the same as the current flowing through R6. So in other words, we can say that I5 is equal to 1.4 amps as well. And then we can perform a similar calculation to determine the potential difference across resistor five. So we're going to multiply I5 by R5, and this will give us that potential difference. Again, I5 is 1.4 amps. R5 was given as eight ohms. And when we perform this calculation, we get V5 is equal to 11.2 volts. So far, so good. Now, we're going to actually take R5 and R6 and combine them. And when we combine them, we again note that they were in series. So let's take a look at how that would work. So when combining resistors that are in series to get the equivalent resistance, you would add the individual resistance values together. So what we're saying is that this equivalent resistor, which arose from combining resistors five and six, we can find that resistance value by summing the original resistance values. Now let's recall that R5 was eight ohms and R6 was four ohms. So if we add those together, we get an equivalent resistance of 12 ohms. So we can mark this as 12 ohms. Similarly, we can add the individual potential differences. So we're gonna combine V5 and V6 by adding them. So we take V5, which we determined was 11.2 volts, and V6 was 5.6 volts. We add them together and we get 16.8 volts. And then finally, when it comes to the current, we simply adopt the original current that was present or flowing through those two resistors. So in other words, the current flowing through resistor 5.6 is the original current. It's the 1.4 amps. And why we also mark the potential difference that we just determined. So now we have all three values. We have potential difference, resistance, and current. We're gonna continue then working our way backwards. Next, we will combine, therefore, R5.6 with this parallel resistor R4. So again, what we're now doing is combining R4 with the R5.6. They are in parallel, and we've combined them using this notation right here. We have R4, 5.6, and the notation tends to get a little cumbersome, but that's okay. When we combine two parallel resistors, we have to follow a couple of additional rules. So we can see from this rule right here that the potential difference across this equivalent resistor here, this R4, 5.6, that is simply going to equal the original potential difference across 5.6. So remember that the original potential difference across 5.6 was 16.8 volts. So that means that we can comfortably label this as having a potential difference of 16.8 volts. Now to get the actual resistance value, we're gonna to have to use this parallel resistance equation. So we have to plug in the resistances that were given in the problem. The R4 was given as 16 ohms, and then we had determined that R5.6 was 12 ohms. You could look back at the diagram to see that. This is going to help us calculate the equivalent resistance of R4, 5.6. So what you would do is just pick up your calculator perhaps and add the right side, so 1 16th plus 1 12th, that's going to give you seven over 48. And then what I like to do is I just like to invert both sides of this equation. And by doing that, the left side becomes R4 comma five, six over one, and then 48 over seven. Now you might want to divide 48 by seven to get a nice decimal value. That's about 6.86 ohms. So that turns out to be this resistance value over here. We can add a label to the diagram. 
What we don't yet have is the amount of current that is flowing through R4, 5, 6. So what we want to do is find that current. We'll just call it I for simplicity. We can use Ohm's law once again to figure out that current I. So we'll plug in the potential difference that we just calculated, 16.8 volts. That's going to equal that current I times the resistance that we just calculated. You'll go ahead and just divide both sides by the resistance to get the current. And when you do that, you should get a current of about 2.45 amps. So that's the current that's flowing through that resistor marked 4, 5, 6. We will label that current on our diagram. And then next we will combine the resistors marked R2 and then R4, 5, 6. These are in series, which means that to get the equivalent resistance, we would add the individual resistances. So over here we have this notation. We're combining resistor 2 along with that 4, 5, 6. And to get the equivalent resistance, we just add the resistances. So 2 ohms plus the 6.86 ohms. This gives us 8.86 ohms. And so we can create a new drawing now. And then remember that the current going through this equivalent resistor is going to be the same as the current going through these two individual resistors. That current was 2.45 amps, so we can label that accordingly. And then finally, to get the potential difference across this equivalent resistor right here, we could just apply Ohm's law, which tells us to multiply that current that we just obtained by the resistance. I'm going to drop some of the notation here for simplicity, but the current was 2.45 amps, and the equivalent resistance was the 8.86 ohms. When you multiply those, you should get about 21.7 volts. So that is the potential difference across this equivalent resistor. We're getting there. Now we're going to combine this resistor here as well as R3. Those are in parallel, so we're going to want to find the equivalent resistance. Again, we'll sort of simplify the notation at this point, but to find the equivalent resistance, we're going to do 1 over R3 plus 1 over that other resistance, which we awkwardly labeled 2 dash 4 comma 5 6. So we'll plug in those values. R3 was 2 ohms. And then we had determined that that other R2456 was 8.86 ohms. So let's just pick up our calculators and add the right-hand side. And the right-hand side should be about 0.6129. And then when you invert both sides, you might want to put this over 1. Invert both sides, that's going to give you REQ on the left side. And then 1 over the 0.6129 should be about 1.63. And that's going to be in ohms. And therefore, we can create a new drawing after combining those two resistors highlighted in yellow. We are so close. Now, let's recall that when you combine the two parallel resistors that you can use the same voltage across the single resistor. So that voltage was going to be labeled over here. We're going to label that 21.7 volts. And then we can use Ohm's law one more time here to calculate the current. So V is equal to IR. We plug in the V. And then we're going to have the R of 1.63 ohms. Let's divide both sides by that to find I. And that current turns out to be 13.3 amps. So that's the current going through this resistor right here, 13 0.3 amps. It's also the current going through R1 because R1 is in series with this equivalent resistor. So we can say that I1 is equal to 13.3 amps. Now all we need to do is get the potential difference across the R1. So we use Ohm's law again. So we can say V1 is going to equal I1 times R1. We just got that current, 13.3 amps. Multiply that by the resistance of 2 ohms, and you're going to get 26.6 volts for that V1. We are in the clear, aren't we? Because these final two series resistors will have a total potential difference by summing the individual potentials. So in other words, the EMF of the battery, which is right here, is going to equal the V1 plus this V on that equivalent resistor. The notation, again, gets a little awkward here. But we're basically just summing the voltages. Anytime you have two resistors in series, you can sum their voltages. So we take 26.6 volts, and we add that to the volts we found earlier of 21.7 volts. And we end up with an EMF supplied by the battery of 48.3 volts. This is indeed the final answer to the question. 
Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please don't feel obligated to do so.